Hello, everybody. I am Paul Lathrop. I am the uh, host here and the founder of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Uh, this, of course, Polite Society News. This is the Training Friday edition of Polite Society News. Joining me, as he does on almost all of the Training Fridays, is Tom Walls of the Firearms Academy of Seattle. Tom, thanks for coming along for the ride today, man. Hey, Paul. It's always a pleasure, and happy Thanksgiving a day late. Yeah, same Happy to you, Black man. Friday. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, I did my Black Friday, Yeah, I'm going to say three or four days ago, and it yeah. all showed up today. So, you know, I I just, I cannot get into, I, 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 I do not get into going through crowds and, and all the hectic and the, and the, uh, I got to be honest with you, if, if you go to, if you go to Black Friday sales today, if you were up at 5 a.m. and getting ready to go to the store and showing up when it opened, you <clears> probably <throat> needed some de-escalation, wouldn't you? I would think so. Um, we had planned on doing this last time and, and events got in our way, but we're talking today about de-escalation. And the classic thing, are you ready, Paul? You want to do it together? Sure. Three, two, one. You, you need, need to calm down. down. Yes. And it's, it's done in a lot. Worked. It's usually done in a lot higher volume and, and with a lot more force. And with a few adjectives and pejoratives. Um, it has never worked in the history of down calming. Never has. Uh, those of us that are married learn this hopefully early. You need to calm down is a great way to amp. So what we're talking about today and, and – this is not a course or a lecture on. It's kind of a get you used to the idea thing of de-escalation. It became real popular as a buzzword back around 2020, 2021, when the, the defund the police movement was going on. The police could do no right. And as I've said before, I'm a former reserve officer and didn't serve as long or as intensely as the full-time guys do, but have a lot of respect for their world and the crap they have to put up with on a daily basis. And they were being blamed for not being sensitive. And you just needed to de-escalate. And people took that word like it was a mantra, a magic abracadabra phrase. Just de-escalate them with no concept of what, say this politely, what the heck they were talking about. If you need to calm down. Does it work? Um, you can take that phrase, though, and segue it into what does work. So the de-escalation we're talking about, and, and in this case, let's not talk about the um, what the cops have to do to somebody else because you've got that added presence of authority and right. thinking back to my young testosterone besotted years and a little bit of alcohol thrown in. An authority figure was an instant target. and My judgment was poor and my testosterone was high because they had a uniform and they actually had authority. Let's not talk about that so much today. Let's talk about... You and I going out, taking the wives out to dinner, you know, and something happens. Or we're at Black Friday and something happens. It's civilian to civilian, kind of peer to peer, so to speak. So the first thing in the phrase you need to calm down is you. And what we have is the potential for violence is what we're concerned about here. I'm worried about somebody punching somebody in the mouth. Somebody's so enraged that they pull a knife, a gun, you know, a table leg, something. We're trying to avoid violence. And, and here's the thing. If you're not familiar with the phrase monkey dance, especially with men, especially with younger men, and I were one once, and augmented with, with substances, alcohol, drugs, whatever, and in front of an audience either other young men or females or both. It just gets worse. You have this dance, and I take it to this level. Well, you have to respond higher. And it goes up until somebody is so emotionally involved as such poor judgment has their, their, their cognitive functions impaired by our more lizard brain animalistic part of our body. It's just, I have to win. And I'll do whatever it takes to win. And, and I can't back down because of male ego. And the combination of lack of ability to reason and that I have to win because of male ego gets a lot of people knifed and shot. And 
I don't like being like the top. I'm kind of adverse to it. So in this case, the de-escalation is to get away from this, this lack of, of cognitive function brought on by all these factors, individually or, or in some combination, and bring this pack person back down to reason so they can at least be talked to. But the first person in this equation is you. If you're both amped up, you're not reasoning either, and you're going, oh, yeah? I'll show him. You can't do that to me. I have rights. Huh. I don't get backed out. I'm not a small kitten. And the other person knows that it will push the buttons. And then you get to the point where, where violence spills over. And it's almost always the next day in, in retrospect and often in a jail cell, you're going, man, that was stupid. Mm -hmm. But it's already happened. So what can we do about that? Paul, if I was if I was talking to you and we were young and stupid and didn't know each other, and we've already got one of the three already, both of us, and I said, oh, yeah? Hey, bald dude, red hat, what are you looking at, buddy? Not much. Yeah, okay, okay, I have to win. Oh, yeah? You think you're pretty tough, huh? Tough enough. Yeah, you see, and I, I like to watch the movie clips, and then you compare that to the security videos, and, and it's the same dance. It's that monkey dance. One of the few things Hollywood often gets right they they do it's 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 a formula and you you watch it from a distance and you know I watched a couple of bar fights and it's like this is dumb. One of you to change the almost inevitable course of this has got to be the adult in the room and it's got to back down and the first thing is getting rid of the ego. One thing we pound in our students we have it on all the boards and all the classrooms at the Firearms Academy of Seattle is ego has no place in survival. So a smarter person than I am came up with this, and, and the, I wish I could attribute it correctly. But they said, if you wouldn't ask this stranger's advice, why do you care about their opinion? Okay. So if the guy says, oh, you're a, put in your, I, this is really family friendly, okay, put in your favorite epithet, and, and mm -hmm. crude is, okay, are you really that? No. Do you care what he says? No. Is he, are your friends going to believe him? No. So you have to divest yourself of what they say, and you can almost predict what it's going to be. I mean, if you can't predict two-thirds of it, you just have a live one. Once you get past that, it can go, okay, this is something I can work with. I'm playing chess, and he's not even up to checkers level. Then you can start to go through processes of getting persons to de-escalate get them ramped down we got any comments i saw you looking at yeah, the comment thing. i did really um, we have stories stories me, are good i, I want to hear other people uh let me get this one in from robert and by the way if you want to get your comment in just comment on the live video wherever you're watching it with the exception of rumble i get them very quickly if you're watching on rumble i hope i get to it in time but uh at any rate uh, Robert uh, on hey, Robert. the YouTube side says, in the old days, police used to de-escalate using massage therapy by a massage mm -hmm. therapy by applying a nightstick to various body parts. The wood shampoo, yes. Well, and um, it works. <laughs> it, it it does, and but um, and I and I, I talked to you earlier before we were on the air. I I talked to you, Tom, earlier. And mentioned that Susan and I have discovered that we have access to some episodes of the show Cops that were filmed after Fox canceled them because of the George Floyd thing. And I very quickly over the past day have realized it's a very good thing I was never a police officer because I would be I would be too quick to you're an idiot, you're lying, here's a nightstick. Here's here's the taser. Here's the you know I I would I I was never built to be a cop. I happily got it through the few years I served as a reserve officer. I would not choose to do it again, not because of me so much as not all departments back their officers up. The 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 department I worked for was sterling. I still maintain a relationship with a few of the officers there. 
I was proud to work for them. Um, but I got lucky because the, the chief we had at that time started out, actually he started out as a reserve officer and he'd work the street and he would, he would work Christmases for the officers. One officer just had a baby. Mm. And we had backup from our, from our, uh, from our chief. I had at the first department I worked at. Not everybody gets that. And then the political climate too. So again, although the wood shampoo and the polyester pile are fun to talk about the old days, it was a little before my time and not what we're talking about so much here. Yeah. We're well, trying let, to, yeah, we're trying to get us calmed down so we can do that. Let, let me, let me run a phrase past you. And that right. is, and that is this, uh, the one I envision happening in the off because I was a, a young, stupid guy once too. Uh, the one, the one that comes up uh, in my head and, and where I run into my most problems as a young man was in a, an establishment that is meant for people gathering that served alcohol. I've heard of those. And uh, uh, the, the the phrase that comes to my mind, I I'm got to admit this is this I, I'm stealing this straight from, and I got to find before I say the name. I got to find. Nope, I don't have it in the new one yet. Uh, I I stole this directly from Masada You. And there's supposed to be a ah uh, that I haven't got set up in the in the new s uh, set since I switched over to the new computer. But yeah, one for John Moses Browning too. Yeah, there we go. Um, but I'm I stole it, man. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take offense. Can I buy you a beer? Can I buy you a shot? Can I buy you a drink? Um, when when Mass came out with that phrase when I w went through one of his mag forties years ago, that was. Bing, apologize, put it, you know, mm -hmm. get it, get it so that, you know, guys don't want to apologize. I never want to apologize because I never think I'm wrong, but shift it, apologize off the start. How can I make this right? And then, then it's on them. If I don't want to look like a male appendage, I had better. Yes. The, the 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 first thing when you've when you've got yourself under some type of control and that's an entire topic you know I I do breathing because that's my background and I was taught to do that to relax or um, step back and say what's what's the real thing here is it my ego that's going to have problems and I give you an example I'll, I'll confess to something stupid I did and I wasn't all that young when I did it I was parking in the parking employee parking garage but I was parked in the wrong section because I was waiting for, for a, a windshield company to come replace my cracked windshield. We had agreed to meet in a certain place. It was raining outside, covered parking garage. I didn't want to go to the employee uncovered park. And the security guy was not happy with that. And we, I lost it. I got loud with him. He got loud at me. Words were exchanged. And he wasn't de-escalating and neither was I. And it took me almost a full minute, which is really a long time in an argument to realize the trap I had let myself fall into. And I thought, you're not going to win the argument because he's not allowed to lose. And I realized he was doing something. I started listening to what he was saying and I started watching his body language. He was getting loud. He was puffing up. He was looking large. He was bigger than I am anyway. And he was starting to repeat the same phrase over and over and over. He was looping. And you can see this in these videos. You watch cops or any of the things on YouTube. Those were signs that he was really emotionally involved in reasoning with him was not. So I backed down and, and basically did what you said was uh, give him give him an out that was acceptable to him. So that was an example of first controlling me. Um, the thing that mass goes into, I've seen people use rarely when they do role play scenarios, they'll take a throw down wallet. I learned to do that and I carry one and it's got a it's a little billfold, a money clip. And there's obviously stuff in it. It's mostly ones, but the big, I've got a 20 or a 10 on the outside. It looks tempting. You can see the edge of a credit card. Now that credit card expired in 2019, but it's there. And I can give that up. The Or the another instructor talks about the, the my bad 20. Hey, my bad. Here's a $20 bill, man. I just buy, you guys have, have a beer on me and I'll leave. Getting the ego out of it, like you said. 
um, to avoid that. Well, you can't be here. This is our bar. And you could go, well, I don't see a sign. Yeah, well, that doesn't go anywhere. You're trying to win. It's a power trip. You fall yeah. into that trap like I did with the security guard. It's more of a um, break the script kind of a thing. You're expecting this dance because you and I have seen this at our age, you know, so many times it just ramps up and up and up. Somebody's going to win and they both end up losing or in jail. If somebody's in the hospital. Break the script. People don't expect a man, especially, to go, you know, I, I'm i sorry. I, that just wasn't right here. I, let me apologize. I'll leave at your bar. You're absolutely right. You know, well, my first reaction when I'm amped up is, well, I'm being a small kitten. You know, I'm not being manly. I can't let him do that. I've got to teach him a lesson. Well, one thing, what lesson would I teach him, except that I'm easily manipulated by anger. To be able to have the courage to step back and break that script is hard to do. And I'm not going to tell you that I'm great at it. I've been able to, but there are times when I failed. But if you can break that script, uh, change the topic. So you've got to listen to what you're doing, look at the body language. And there's a lot of body language things. Um, and excellent topics and courses on the subject. But it's the, the repetition of phrases, the voice gets loud, things get puffy, breathing breathing starts to get a little rapid, start to get that adrenaline, you burn it off with, with motor contractions. You lean forward, guys will puff up and stand tall to look physically bigger, just like a cat's fur expands a little bit like this. Um, those are the signs that, that things are not going in a direction you're going to be happy with when it gets there. You need to be able to pull it back. That's the part that people don't understand when they say, well, those cops should have just de-escalated the situation and go, I know the answer. The cops are stupid or poorly trained or inept or they're looking for violence. The other person has a vote in this situation. The other person can say, I don't want to de-escalate. I like being angry. Let me tell you, adrenaline is a hell of a drug. It really gets you amped up. And there are adrenaline junkies. There are anger junkies. There are crisis junkies. I bet everybody out there listening has got a friend or two that just lives crisis to crisis. And that emotional thing is like a drug. They don't know how to live any other way. You get somebody like that, and they are not as amenable to calming down. So you've got to use some tricks. One of the common... I hate to say trick. One of the common techniques is called mirroring. People tend to mirror each other's language, body posture, speech, cadence, whatever. So if somebody's getting really, really loud and talking and going really fast and you have to do this because I said so and you can't make me, or their voice tightens up and gets squeaky, but there's a change in the voice, muscles are contracting and you want to get them to go the other way. People tend to mirror, so if you can slow your voice down a little bit and maybe pull the volume down a little bit. Think of dealing with a small, angry five-year-old. If you've never been around one, it's a real experience. Be around a small, angry five-year-old. They don't have the emotional control. They're going to amp up, and every time you tell them no, or try to use authority and say, no, you have to act this way. You need to calm down. It never works because they're going to be defiant and that path will go on and that escalation will happen. Those monkeys will dance and things get bad. If you're lucky, it's a five-year-old that gets spanked. Uh, if you're not lucky, it's a knife in your rib. So what do you do? Slow it down. Calm it down. And often they will respond to that and their voices will become a little less loud and a little less strident and a little calmer. And they're starting to come back into the forebrain, the reasoning part of the brain. Once you can get them emotionally to that state, you've got a much better chance of being able to reason with them. Um, doesn't always work, but it doesn't cost you anything. The other thing you're doing at this point, once you're in your rational brain, is since it's a potentially violent situation, is you want to create distance, you know, physical distance. Because people that act irrationally and, and, and sporadically and, and spontaneously might just jab at you. They don't have to be good. They just have to be lucky. I it's want... unpredictable and, and unthought out and, and 
sometimes it can lead to something else if the first strike doesn't work. Sure. Or it may bring you out of your control to stay back amped up. I want to go. I want to go back to what you were saying about uh, lowering your volume and uh, and and one thing that I learned. Uh, this has been before I ever got into firearms. But when I was honestly, when I was uh, going through college and I was studying media, I, I was going to be. For those who don't know my personal story, I, w- I went. To, my entire schooling was going to be. I was going to be the next hot shot radio DJ, and. One thing I learned in that is people listen more carefully the quieter you get. And you may, by being loud, by, by you increasing your voice, increasing your, your, your intensity of your voice, that you can get people that are farther away. But if you want to bring people in, for example, if you're trying to sell them something, go low lower your voice make sure they have to strain to hear you to come in closer and what i think we're trying to sell here is let's not do this yeah give them a way out um once you get them so they're not talking as much and they start listening to you you can start to direct them Um, and and this goes down to good listening skills again any good husband uh, has survived long enough you have listening skills you're going to make eye contact, not threatening eye contact, okay? Not this kind of eye contact, but, you know, a little nod, maybe a tilt, that sort of thing that's, that's friendly. The hands, now I'm going to have my hands in front of me because I want to be able to do what I need to do um, or guard my gun and blade away in interview stance once I've created that distance. Distance is time, time is safe. Start talking with your hands a little bit if that's natural. Open gestures, open palms, no closed fists. And, and this stuff is obvious if you think about it. But if you watch people that are good at this, it's a very calming thing. Last time I was at the, the famous gun school in Paulden, Arizona, there was an instructor, a gentleman named Steve Tamerlein. And he's also a physician and also a combat medical doctor. I mean, he had a rifle in one hand and thrown on tourniquets with the other. High stress environment, violence was not just a possibility, it was a reality. This man had the most calming voice in lecture or on the line coaching or running scenarios. And Diane and I talk about this every once in a while. It's like, man, I want this guy to give me bad news. I want this guy to be on my side in a medical situation. I mean, he could tell you, well, Probably lose the leg, but you know, you're going to live. And I'd go, cool. He had that confidence in his voice. He was not confrontative when he'd say, give you an instruction on the line. He's like, well, I always do it this way. I go, no, got confidence. I'm going to listen to him and maybe learn something. And he didn't speak very loudly, nor did he speak very quickly. He was an excellent real world example of being able to bring people to a commons where they can start to see maybe there's another way to handle this. So you've got yourself de-escalated, uh, a worthy study all by itself just for that reason, and you've started to connect, you've mirrored them. Maybe you'll use the same language they use or the same colloquialism. I pride myself I can speak corporate medical uh, and I can speak you know, down to earth, cop, military and everything between, and I can I can color my language with with four letter words or polysyllabics because I will mirror them. I'll do this with students to make them comfortable. Once you can make some kind of connection, then you can start to redirect. You know, redirect with them. Well, here, you know, here's the 20 man. I'm really sorry. Find out what they want. What do they want? You can flat out ask them what 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 do you need to make this or what can I do? That way you're taking responsibility so they, they perceive they're winning, they have that power that they're looking for. And remember, it costs you nothing. You'll probably never see this person again. What do I care what his opinion of me is? Do you realize there are, what, seven and a half, eight billion people on planet Earth? Do you really think you can make all of them like you? Ain't well, probably only six and a half billion in my case. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, some of some of my, my baggage in my former life was... If you had 20 people in a room and 19 liked you, I'd be looking for the 20th one. Learn that you can't do that. So if this guy thinks I'm a jerk, 
or a coward and he calls me that, I don't really care about his opinion if I can keep my ego in check. So do a redirect, okay? So I've changed the, the speech tempo. If I can offer some sympathy, did a scenario where I had to de-escalate somebody one time in a mental institution. Cool scenario. And it was my brother, and he was upset that he wasn't being treated well. So my solution was to say, well, those assholes, come on, let me go buy your beer. And apparently the instructors thought was that it was acceptable. It was a de-escalation, calm down, sympathize, redirect. Okay? Sometimes the redirection could be as simple as, as um, saying, you know, you're right. Thanks for pointing that out. Another redirect, um, again, this is something I picked up from someone else. I'm not that smart, but an example of, um, the example this guy gives is, you look at my girl, which is, when I was younger, was more of a threat than it is now. But, oh, man, I'm sorry. I was just staring. Is her name Madeline? She looks like a Madeline to me. Here, let me let me buy you guys a drink. It's not what was expected. You know, the, the script, what are you looking at? Nothing much. Well, yeah, you want to step outside? Yeah, well, you, you and water, I mean, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's completely off to the side, and it's non-threatening. Um, one that I've used, actually, somebody will be, you know, what are you looking at? Not much. What are you looking at? Oh, I'm sorry, that shirt. My brother had a shirt like that. They're always like that. Where did you get that? She completely takes it out. And if the guy wants to go, but he's going to look stupid now. Especially the guys, I'm complimenting you. You're going to look a little silly, giving me a lot of grief and giving me threats and guffs and stuff. And then there's the ultimate, the ultimate way to end this thing. Once you've created some distance to be safe, do that and then leave. Just like you and Susan did. You know? Yeah. Remember what Mr. Miyagi taught us in, in Karate Kid years ago? What's the best block? Don't be there. Yes. I've been hearing that from my master years before that. It's an old thing. Um, was it Sun Tzu that was saying the best the best battle is the one you never fight? Absolutely. So you can, if you can communicate with somebody in such a way that gets them so they're thinking rationally, then you can lead them certain ways. Like I say, there are courses and books galore on this and masters of it that can get you to go all kinds of places and thank you for changing their mind. But if I can just get somebody so that they're, they're a little more calm. Now, the, the, the caveat with that is, remember, I said that they have a vote. They can choose to do that. You know, if they really like being amped up, it's harder if they're on drugs or if they've got a mental instability that they didn't sign up for themselves, you may not be able to do this. Maybe even a skilled professional can't do it, uh, and those folks are out there. But when you've got the criminal that doesn't care about de-escalating, he's going to go in there, and if you're being mugged or if it's a takeover robbery or something, typically what you see is a lot of loud, blustering domination. And the people that they end up shooting are in one of two categories. We know this because we've asked, but we, the law enforcement training community, have done surveys of people in prison. Okay, you you did a takeover robbery, and um, this guy said something, and you shot him. Why? And it comes down to one of two things. Almost 100% of the time, it adds up. I think it's like 99 or almost 100%. Either you question my authority, or you disrespected me. That goes along with that amping up. Well, I'm going to question your authority if it's a cop, if you have that encounter, or if it's some guy, hey, you can't toss me out of here. I have a right. It's a public place. Um, or you disrespect them. You, you, you call them a name. You know, I have the gun. I'm in charge. So it's that script. If you can keep your ego in check long enough to get past that initial phase, and they're going, what I wanted was to dominate and show that I have a superior force, and it apparently succeeded because people are doing what I tell them to do. At that point, maybe some opening will come and you'll be able to move that situation where it's going to go. And the last thing, because I see we're just about out of time, is please, folks, like we say at FAS, ego has no place in survival. Survival is the key. It's not to um, prove that you're anything. If you have to prove something about yourself, you need to do some growing up. You know, even if you're in your 60s like me, 
constantly have to keep that in check. What are your goals? My goal is to protect my wife and those people in my in my company that are worthy of protection, the innocents. And my job is to get out and get home. Okay, I'm not going to be the guy that saves the day and gets the key to the city. I wanna I wanna survive and continue to do what I do. Yeah. And we, as you mentioned, we are we are right up towards the end of the uh, time we have today. Tom, well, we always, I, I, as I always do, I need to ask you, we're in the end of November right now. Is there anything left at the Firearms Academy of Seattle this year? And if so, what is it and what's coming up? We've got, I believe, one class left. And here at FAS, it's not the weather. It's the day length. It's about 4.30. The sun goes down. It gets too dark to shoot around 3.45 or 4. So we back down our classes. We have the indoor classes. We just had a Dark Angel Medical. We will be giving one more class here. Uh, first week in December, Defensive Handgun, which is a two-day class. It's very intense and very complete. And then we ramp up in January, and the days start getting slightly longer with our a lot of our introduction to handguns for the folks that get guns for the first time for Christmas. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the Black Friday sales. They're looking pretty good from preliminary reports. And then how to handle shotguns, how to handle your new rifle, do the tactical stuff, do the handgun retention. We've added that, and we are updating our program to include more contemporary situations. And as you can tell, it's a favorite thing of mine to talk about, but we have a limited time. So let me suggest go to the website if you have any questions, www firearmsacademy.com all one word or play this back pause hit the qr code takes you right to the website very very cool uh we could do another honestly we could be done 30 minutes we could do another hour on this without a problem but uh thanks tom and 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 just to explain, I know we did this, what, uh, two years ago when Tom and I first started doing this. Just to explain, the what was the bullet is now going over on podcast form on the Polite Society podcast feed. That is a much, much bigger feed than anything that has, that, that this has ever seen on video anywhere. Uh, we, get, we get downloads that absolutely dwarf everything combined we do on video in podcast and since we're on polite society now i wanted to introduce tom and introduce this topic into the polite society podcast feed is why we brought it up again so tom thanks again man and uh, we'll see you in two weeks always a pleasure my friend we'll, have, we'll swap some stories all right podcast listeners again thank you for listening live viewers thank you for for watching Come join us again Sunday night, 7 p.m. Central Time for our Week in the Review Week in Review show. And until then, take care, everybody. See you next time.